feels kind of professional writing things down and being organized about it, so I feel like there's a little more pressure than normal. I feel like we're in a spaceship. Look at your phone. Yeah, it does kind of look that way. This isn't going to work. Do I have to say? I don't think everyone's going to think this looks like Cher. They'll get it as soon as you start singing. Do you believe love after love? Love, 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 love. Hi, I'm Joe. I'm Sherry. Or Cher. Maybe. Oh, just... <laughs> and you're watching A Life More Light. Thank you. We are going to talk to you today about a lagoon mount. Because there's probably few things more important than square footage, especially in a small camper. You could always use a little more square footage. Yeah. Whether it's a boat, an RV, camper, travel trailer, you could always use a little more square footage. So let's get right into it. <laughs> so in this video, we're going to tell you the three reasons. Three Reasons. You are going to rip your RV table out of your RV. Throw it away. 86 it. <laughs> That's what they say in restaurants. 86 it. And put in Ooh, a different mount. A I lagoon mean... system. That's what it says on their website. Oh. It's a lagoon table system. Top three reasons. Number three. So the number three reason you're going to rip out your table is that there's an ease. Oops. I could hear myself making that noise. Yeah. Lee, 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 Lee. Okay. I really wish he hadn't started mowing the lawn as we started this. He started the moment we turned the camera the on. The moment. He started mowing his lawn. Fortunately, he's got a small front yard. <laughs> Not small enough. <sighs> okay. Number three reason that you are going to get rid of your table and put in this system is the ease of movement. It doesn't really matter what your dinette setup is. Many of them have tricky spots to get it in and out of. Um, and ours is right here. This yep. is, so. You're kind of pinned in there with the counter here, uh, your head here. And when the table is fixed, it's sitting like this. But with this system, you just move it like that. And you're out. Another handy thing with it being able to move the tabletop like this is, if you put something you're going to share on the table, you can literally just pass it over to your fellow person. Like a lazy Susan. Yes. Just moving around. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I don't know about this one. And there's a lot more space under the table. Typically when we're traveling, we put our grocery bags in here because we're vegan and we eat a lot of food. So we put the food up here so there's weight on the tongue. There used to be a track here, and even if there wasn't anything under the table, you'd have to constantly set your feet on the track when you were sitting, and I didn't really prefer that. Yeah, you got a track, and then right in the middle here is a pole. And now we've got another area up here too. When we are parked and we're stationary, we put the dog bed here. Sohar, 80 pounds, and she's losing weight. <laughs> she's down under 80 pounds now. But we put the dog bed here, and then she can sleep in her own bed. And before we get to our third and final reason, I wanna talk about the mounts that we put in in our Alto R 1713. In the front, I uh, went a little nuclear on it. I used a three quarter inch thick piece of solid aluminum because I really was unsure that the thin walls were gonna be able to support this table. Our table, the standard table, because we chose to use the standard table that comes with the R 1713, it's almost two foot wide by three foot long. Most lagoon tables are typically smaller than that. Also, there's some white plastic shims that come with the lagoon system, and those shims are designed to go underneath the mounting point. And if you put them underneath the mounting point, it helps keep things level. Now, I opted to put a second one at the table, so there's the sandwich of the table, the shim, and then the mount itself, and that keeps things straight as an arrow. I lightened up a little bit on the back mount. I used one inch hollow aluminum rather than the three quarter inch solid plate and just used tubular bar. I got all of this stuff at a local big box store, home improvement store, with the exception of the thick plate. I got that at a local metal supermarket. Uh, there's Speedy Metals, there's a number of different franchises out there, but most major cities do have a metals warehouse where you can purchase something and they'll cut it right to size for you. In the case of the rear mount, I did that all myself, just used a drill and did it in the garage. In the case of the front mount, I actually have a machinist friend of mine who bored the holes to match the supplied lagoon mount. 
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps us out. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. We're getting so close. And now let's get to the number one reason why we switched out to the Lagoon table system. Here's the number one reason you're gonna rip out your table. This is probably gonna seem minor, but in, this, in a small space, it ended up being our favorite part. So in the original mount, the table would have been about this position with seven inches between the wall and the table. What we can do is just push it right up against it. We gain that full seven inches here. And that might not seem like a lot of space, but when, especially when you're coming in from the outdoor in, or even just using the entrance and exit here, seven inches is a lot of space. I mean, that's like a whole nother butt. <laughs> Depends whose butt you're talking about, I suppose. <laughs> So instead of one butt here, you can easily put two yeah. and an 80 pound dog. Yeah, and we have just enough room for two butts and a dog. It's perfect. To show you how the adjustments happen on the table very quickly, there are three points and the handles pull out to get to the point where you want to like stop it and then they turn in that direction or they can turn in the other direction. So you have to pull it out to get, instead of going all the way around, you pull it out and reset it where you're gonna tighten. This adjustment turns the top of the table. Okay, and then this adjust adjustment back here, same thing, pull it out and turn, moves this part of the table. And then this one down here moves the same way Oh, that one's tight. I guess that's good. And that one moves it up and down. Some things you might want to consider for this mod is that you have to treat RV walls, I think of them as like cardboard. And maybe you can speak to that. You have to find supports in other areas or create them. Yeah, without having some backing bracing of some sort or blocking, it won't support this mount or any size table. Another thing to consider is that depending on how far away your table gets from the mount, obviously it's going to be stronger right under, right here sure. where the mount is, yeah. and it's going to get weaker the further it gets out. And you may have some movement like this. It's very minimal, and to be really honest, um, with the last table we had with the pole in the middle, it was kind of like a teeter-totter. You had the same thing happening on both sides instead of it just on one side. Yeah, and it, it actually it only happened on one side because Joe would constantly put his elbows on one side of the table and he would push so hard, yeah, like that. And he would push so hard and the whole table would flip up like that. And so, I don't think it flipped up like that. Yeah, pretty that, much. That, that, that might. That's the way I remember it. I believe that. Um, one thing that you found helpful when you were doing this mod is he did a test fit of everything. Yeah, I, I did initially when I did the front mount, I did that just out of a, a piece of scrap plastic that I got from a local plastics distributor and just mocked it all up out of plastic and actually mounted the whole thing just to kind of make sure that what was designed would function properly and would hold the table. And we actually went camping with it for oh, that's right. a weekend, I think, and just made sure that this worked before I did it out of aluminum because I didn't want to commit to aluminum unless I knew that the, the design was sound. We didn't do any dance parties on the table that weekend, but... We but the weekend after, once we had aluminum, <laughs> we were dancing on the table. But it worked well with plastic. Sherry was dancing on the table. <laughs> it worked well with the plastic, but we were a little more gentle with it. It wasn't a long-term solution, but it was great to figure out that it worked, so that you yeah. could that you could actually drill into things and and install it yeah, right. and have it turn out the way you wanted it. Yeah, I can't speak to most campers. I would assume that a lot of campers are using um, wood for their bracing in one form or another. In our camper, uh, there is some metal, some painted metal, and some of it's steel, some of it's aluminum. So there's, there's bracing at the top of things and the bottom of things, and I used that bracing to support the wall because as Sherry said, the walls are basically like cardboard, and especially in our vehicle, as in most RVs, they're designed to be lighter. Uh, whether you're towing it or whether you have a motor in your RV and pulling it, lighter makes more sense. But lighter doesn't work well when you're trying to mount something that you're going to put your elbows on. Yeah, every day.
kind of wrap things up there. The this is something that I mean I don't even know if you can have this done in RV place. We have seen it done in RV places where somebody just took a block of wood and stuck it behind the mount. And then the table just bounced around like crazy. It's quite possible that you might have a trusted place that you can take your RV to that they could install this mount for you. Mm -hmm. But I would caution you in that some people that, I mean, we have seen firsthand, some people have had it installed in a way that was not supported properly and could never, I mean, it probably would have ripped the wall right off yeah. if they continued to use it that way. So that's one thing to consider. Like, this is a... I like that he was comfortable doing it as a DIY because I know he's going to be extra, extra careful with it. We're fortunate that both the one in the front and the back, there's a Facebook group for Alto uh, enthusiasts and Alto owners, and there's great posts. And so if you're going to do this, I would look to see, is there a Facebook group for this? Or if there's other YouTube videos that are showing you specifically how to do bracing or YouTube some things for bracing in an RV and see what you can find. The one that we did in the back, as I, you saw earlier in the video, was just tubular bar stock and some angle iron, and that was from a Facebook group, and it worked really well. It was a really solid, a really good design. I don't think I've missed any other drawbacks. I'm sure some of you out there haven't installed this table, and if there, if I've missed something, if there's some, <laughs> some thing that we have failed to mention, please put it in the comments. Um, I think that's that's all I can think of. It's improved our camping experience Oh, seventeen point seven percent. Yes, he announced this to me mm -hmm. recently. Seventeen point seven percent. And that depends on the day. When Irma's not sleeping in the bed with us, and she's in her bed, I'd say it's more like thirty something. That's pretty wonderful. Yeah. I think she, I think Irma likes it better too. Yeah, she does. She has her own room at home. <laughs> Did you hear that? What? Hi. Well, we hope that this has helped you out. The only reason that we found out about the Lagoon table was from Van Life. Both of our kids built out vans and they happened to buy Lagoon tables. And once I saw it in their van, I knew we had to have it in our rig. I know there isn't a lot of information out there for the Lagoon mount. So uh, hopefully we've covered the questions that you may have had clicking on this video. But if we've missed something, please comment below and we will definitely get you answers to that question. Yeah. Please, yeah, comment below. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. It's handy. See you next time.